I'm Warrington Hudlin. I'm the vice chairman at the Museum of the Moving Image here in Astoria, Queens, New York. And we're here to celebrate the fourth anniversary of Cooley High. We'll show y'all turkeys how to do it. It's a great space to honor films from uh, all cultures. And I'm, I, I love the fact that Warrington has invited me here for four weekends to talk about the body of my work. Cooley High is part of the African American cin cinema canon. It is really a foundational work in which many, many films can trace their roots, including that film I was responsible for, which is called House Party. The film was kind of created by Eric Monty, myself, and Gloria. Um, Eric was a great storyteller, but he wasn't a screenplay writer. He didn't know how to, how to write a movie, but he could tell great stories, and, and this yeah. story is basically about his life. Mm -hmm. um, but when I read the script that they gave me, I said, well, it, there's some good stuff in here, but it's not a movie. It doesn't have a through line, doesn't have a spine, doesn't really go anywhere. So I discovered I had to sit down with Eric Monty. I had, I'd go to his house every day for a month and get him to tell stories, and I hired a stenographer to write down wow. everything that he um, said and everything that I said. And so then we started uh, uh, exchanging stories about growing up in the hood. Cooley High is, to me, um, a, a seminal uh, African-American film. It was um, at the beginning of one of my careers where most of the actors in the film, especially from New York, Glenn Turman and uh, Gary Morris, was working in a play I had produced at Lincoln Center called What the Wine Sellers Buy. And Michael Schultz was the uh, director of that film. So it was like they could move directly from Lincoln Center in New York to start in a film called Cooley High. What I did was I went to Chicago first. Uh, Steve Krantz, who was the, the producer, um, just said, you know, we, it looked like we weren't going to be able to do the film. So they said, get to Chicago, start casting, get the ball rolling, because AIP wasn't sure. They were yeah, they do kept it. they kept dragging their feet, um, and, and we said, "Look, Chicago. If we don't shoot this film before Thanksgiving, that, it's going to be impossible. impossible. That Hulk going to hit. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> winter time in Chicago, you know, last winter here in New York, you all thought it was cold. <laughs> That's the beginning of cold in Chicago, right? So we just we just packed up." I packed up, and I was in Chicago for maybe a couple of weeks, I don't know. And uh, we, because there weren't that many really good street actors in Chicago at the time, almost everybody was in commercials or they were models at that time. And um, so th the, there was a great lady who was a casting lady in Chicago uh, who helped. And she started calling either a local theater group or we just went to Cabrini Green, uh, which was where. Um, Did you have a vest on? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I tell you what, at six o'clock we had to get out of there. Okay. To me, Cooley High was sort of like a pioneering efforts of African American uh, uh, African American director, when that was not so popular. Uh, African American directors was making exploitation films, was making get whitey films. Those were not uh, the films that I love. I love the uh, uh, mixture of cinema, uh, of music, especially the Motown music, and that sort of that resonated with me. Wow, the brownie. Yeah, I like sonnets from the Portuguese. Uh, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Yeah, <laughs> this is dynamite. You like poetry? Oh, yeah, this is pretty. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, girl. But if you really like love poetry, you ought to check out a dude called Walter Benton. 
<laughs> he got this poem called, uh, Where I pick Malian or God, I would make you exactly as you are in every dimension. From your warm hair to your intimate toes, would you be holy in your own image? I would change nothing, add, or take away. Yeah, that's dynamite. <laughs> and that poem fits you too, you know? Yeah, it really fits you. Yeah, I'm going to give you that. As soon as I steal a copy. Cooley High is a classic. Uh, there's discussion of possibility of remaking it, but as uh, my brother said, it can't be remade. It's, it's, as he said also, it's a diamond in the rough. It's a hope diamond, and you can't duplicate it. After we finished this month of, of kind of re-putting a script together, went back to um, the executives at AIP, uh, gave them the script, and they read it over, and I got some of the best advice I've ever gotten in my career. They said, okay, this is, this is good. Now, go back home and rewrite every scene in a way that you've never seen on screen before. Mm. And so I had to think about that for a minute and say, hmm, what, what did they mean, you know? And then it dawned on me that the scene where Cochise finds his letter. I mean, most of the time, I help to pay the rent here. Now, I ain't playing with you, Jim. Hey, did I get a letter today? Did you look up on the dresser where the mail is kept? Yeah. Well, then, if it's not on the dresser, then it ain't come yet. Now, Jim Lee, I ain't playing with you. Mm. Of acceptance from college mm -hmm. was written. He comes in the house, got all the stuff going on, <clears throat> and he finds the letter on, on the drawer. I mean, on the uh, bureau where all the letters are kept and reads it and he's accepted. One of the things that our son Brandon was doing at the time is, as a toddler was we would find him putting stuff in the toilet all right, the time. Right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, oh, okay, okay. Instead of him finding the letter on right. the bureau, right, right. his little brother put it in the toilet. And so right. they, they, we created a part for our youngest son <laughs> <laughs> to just to, to have a different way of and, finding. And did you pay him? <laughs> no. Oh, no, that's not right. That's Didn't not right. Didn't have the budget. <laughs> Looking back at Cooley High, uh, you know, t to me, every film is an experience and the opportunity for a filmmaker to put the audience into other people's shoes. And I love being able to transport today's modern audience into the experience and the life of those kids in Cooley High and feel empathy and love and laughter for them and also sorrow and sadness at the loss. So seeing the audience react to that is a real high for me. So if you were here, you just finished a dynamic discussion with, with the great Michael Schultz. And if you miss it, I'm sorry for you, but the good news is that the next three Sundays at 2 o'clock, he'll be back to talk about his, his whole career. This is for the brothers who ain't here. Hey, man, you pouring out our wine. This is for the brothers who ain't here. <laughs> Forget them, man. They ain't here. They don't get none. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, look, there's a lot of brothers that's dead or in jail, and we just got to give them a little bit of respect. Understand? You pour your wine out, we'll drink all. Uh, respect. <laughs> The kid goes first. My name is Michael Schultz, and you're watching Real Black. <laughs>